Let's record a Q&A. Hello and welcome to my channel. How are you all doing? I am so busy. I have to do so much. And then there's also YouTube. I know I should be doing daily vlogs because of Vlogmas, but I don't know. I just have so much to do. And now I get why businesses get into the Christmas dress. There's just so much going on. And I just, I don't know, so much pressure. And there's even more pressure because I'm gonna go to Luxembourg soon and there I can't really work that well. So I have to get everything done until Friday, which is only two days from now. Crazy. So today there's only gonna be a short q and I hope you don't mind. And as always, if you have any more questions, let me know down below and I'm gonna make sure to address them in my next Q&A here on my channel. Let's get started. All right, the first question. What can I do when I have cravings for animal foods slash unhealthy foods? First of all, you're probably craving what you eat most. So if you eat a lot of sweets, you're gonna crave a lot of sweets. If you eat a lot of meat, you're gonna crave a lot of meat because it's just what you're used to tasting and you kind of fulfill that craving by eating the foods that you already know. So to overcome that craving, I would ask myself if it's really hunger for that food or if it's just a craving or if it's just something that you want to eat because you want to eat it but not because you need it. It can be really hard and tricky to overcome eating habits or cravings for unhealthy foods. And I know that the body always craves sweets and junk food because there's a lot of sugar and a lot of fat in there because we're still, like our body is still kind of from like the past days when we were hunter and gatherers because then we didn't have a lot of food and every time when we came across something that's nutrient dense and rich and caloric dense we just wanted to eat as much as possible because there could be some days where there was no food at all, so we had a starch. But in today's life, there's just an abundance of foods and we can get everything we want whenever we want it. And it's kind of bad because there's like 50% of overweight people in the world, more or less, depending on what country you're in. But it's, it's just crazy and it's so unhealthy. So what I did, well, sometimes I crave unhealthy foods and sometimes I do eat them because there's no problem in having fries or having sweets or chocolate once a while but you kind of have to know in what proportion like I love to have around 80% whole foods that are healthy and then around 20% that are junk food where I can treat myself but the question is uh, what to do when you have cravings First of all, a lot of times when you have cravings, you're not really hungry, but you're thirsty. So if you have like that urge to eat something that you actually don't really want to, just go and have a glass of water, wait for 20 minutes and then see if you're still hungry or if you're still craving something. And if you're still craving something, maybe try something healthy first. Like nature's candy is grapes. I love strawberries, I love raspberries, just every kind of fruit or, sm or smoothie bowl. You can make your own healthy sweets with like date sugar or just have some dates. It's crazy, but they're so sweet. And if you don't give in to your cravings all the time and you kind of learn to eat healthy, then your body's gonna crave the healthy things. Like right now I'm craving fruits and I'm craving smoothie bowls and all the healthy stuff that gives me so much energy and nourishes my body and feels just so amazing when you're done eating. Whereas if you're eating a lot of fatty foods, you're just gonna feel down and tired and don't wanna go to the sports and conquer the world. So cravings can definitely be learned or also unlearned. For me, if I now eat like regular sweets from the store, they just too sweet because I'm I just conditioned my tongue or my taste buds to uh, not taste that sweet or that salty so it's just like a process and 
try to convince your mind that you don't need it or that you need other foods. And then regards of the animal foods, it's definitely so much better to go for the vegan options because for every meaty or dairy thing you want, there's some vegan alternative. So if you're really, really craving it and there's like no way around it, just go for the vegan option. And as I said, 20% or just like once in a while, really don't worry about it. Don't beat yourself up because you ate ice cream. It's just normal and it's human and it takes a long time to getting used to eating clean or healthier or better. And even then, you just want to enjoy life, right? Next question, have you ever thought about preparing an online workshop on food photography? It would be so nice to learn a bit on that. Actually, I have been thinking about it, but I don't really know how to start or what I should teach there. So if you have questions or anything you want to learn, please let me know down below. It will be amazing. And I will also love to give not an online workshop, but like a real life workshop on either cooking or food photography or both. That would be really amazing. But I also don't really know how to organize stuff like that. So maybe I need a partner to um, accomplish that. But it would definitely be a goal of mine. And sharing my passion with other people would be amazing. And also seeing you guys in person, um, if you're interested, it would be. It would be actually really nice. Maybe next year, <laughs> we'll see. All right, next one. How did your food photography hobby start? What are its roots? Hmm, good question. Where did it start? I have been into photography since a really long time. I do still remember when I was 16? No, it was before that, maybe like 14 or something. I've been doing photo shoots with my best friend back then. <laughs> it was so, it wasn't food, it was just like fashion. They look kind of bad. Maybe I can find some. Or maybe I'll throw them away. We'll see. If I've got some, I'm just gonna put them in here. But yeah, I've been into photography since then, and it kind of like I wanted to become pretty much everything there is. I wanted to become an astronaut, I wanted to become a veterinarian, I wanted to become a surgeon, I wanted to become an actor, I wanted to become a pop star, even though I can't sing, I wanted to become a dancer, <sighs> what else? Maybe something with languages, like pretty much most of the jobs there are I wanted to become. And during the period where I wanted to find myself, the photography kind of stopped and I got really into drawing and being creative and I think I already told that but I got into like an art class before graduating so I got really into um, Photoshop and all of that stuff and then photography came back at university where we had to take some photography classes and we learned about studio photography with all the flashes and it was most of the time portraits or people but I actually really loved that as well but it wasn't the focus of the of our classes it was more design and advertisement and stuff like that so I got into a advertising company after university and I worked there for a year and I found that I don't like it. <laughs> it was just sitting at the desk all day doing graphic stuff and it's it's nice but it's not what I wanted. It wasn't as diverse and I love to go around just, I don't know, being, being more creative than just sitting behind a laptop. And it can also be creative, some people love it so much but it's not for me. <laughs> I, I'm still doing it, but not to the extent where I was doing it eight hours a day. So during the period where I was working at that agency, I started to do my Instagram more professionally. So I tried to develop my food styling. I tried to become better at taking food pictures, just interacting with the light and making the pictures looking better and better, getting some inspiration from Instagram and YouTube and 
everything and then after six more months I decided to quit my job and become self-employed. <laughs> it wasn't easy, I was struggling for three months and then I finally said okay no more, this is not what I want, it's, got, it's making me unhappy. I gained some weight, I couldn't do my sports because I had to stay at the office all day and yeah it was during that period where I decided I wanted to go for photography and I couldn't be happier because right now I'm just living my life doing a lot of photos, some design, a lot of sports. Yeah, it's just perfect. I think that was, yeah, that word of root. Next question. Here's a follow-up question of one of the other Q&As. It's a question, whereabouts in Australia did you do exchange? If you don't know it, I did an internship for seven months in Australia when I was still at university and I did it in Sydney and I love it so much. I love Australia so much. It's still in my head and I want to go back so, so badly. We'll see when it's gonna happen, but I really do wanna go back. And the people were so lovely. They're so open and so chilled. Like there were people coming at me, just asking me something or just talking to me without wanting to hook up or getting my number or wanting anything back. They just talked to me. And the first time it happened, I was so freaked out and shook and but I love it so much now. And the weather, come on. It's never really cold, which I love. What do you think about weed or other non-synthetic drugs? I think if you want to do it, you can do it. I'm not a really big fan of drugs. I haven't done weed. I even don't drink alcohol. I think my last glass of alcohol was like a year ago. So. I don't know, it's just not really for me, but I think it if it comes from nature, it's not too bad, but you still have to be careful and see that you don't take too much and don't get like freaky visions and are staying on your trip. I don't know if that's a thing, but yeah, I think every drug can be good to enhance your sight and to learn something from it. But you have to be super careful that you're not abusing it and that you're just using it to get away from, from the world, from your own life, because that's really abusive and not good and shouldn't, should never be a part of your life. Because if you're not happy with your life right now, how it is, drugs are not gonna get, get gonna make it better. But I think if you feel good and feel good about yourself and love your life and then you take drugs just to enhance that feeling and maybe get some other knowledge from the universe, then go for it. All right, this is already the last question. It's personal. Are you gonna reveal the reason behind the breakup? As you guys know, Ferdinand and I we broke up, I think like three months ago, and it's still like a real topic and people are still asking me if we actually broke up or what was the reason behind it and stuff like that. But I'm just not gonna talk about it. I'm not gonna say that I'm never gonna reveal anything of it, but it just wouldn't be fair and it's just it's just so personal that it really doesn't belong on YouTube, I feel. So please don't ask me this again. If I feel like talking about it, I'm gonna do it. But I'm just not gonna be pressured in it and I hope you respect that. Um, yeah, but right now, I can assure you that I feel really good about myself. I already told that in my last video that I'm really happy about the situation right now, just living here, being single, enjoying my life, really focusing on my job. So I'm really, I'm really happy. Like I'm not saying this, this because uh, I'm on YouTube and I need to act happy, but I do really feel good. I feel amazing. I had a friend over last night. We talked a lot about all of our lives and it was nice. It was really nice. We shared our happiness and we shared what we love about the life and it just felt so good. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you have any other questions, please let me know down below. I would love to hear them and answer them in my next Q&A. And don't forget to like and subscribe to be a part of the Scorpion Minds. Okay, see you tomorrow here on my channel.